Okay, so what are you saying, people, and welcome back to your favorite YouTube channel. So today, guys, like always, another weekly analysis for you. On the screen are the pairs we analyzed today, but make sure you do stay to the end of the video as I do have a bonus pair in store. We'll quickly go through my trade for the week first and then progress into the analysis shortly afterwards. If there's a particular pair you do want to see my analysis too, feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps below. But uh, it was a quiet week for me until I did get a position on silver, which I'm currently still holding and I am still long on this position. We did see a nice reaction off this low. This is a pair that I've been looking at for a while. I was initially looking for the breaking me test of the high here, although I stayed at the market because of the US elections. Price then had a really aggressive break of that. Now we'll come back to the lower end here. We've used this area as support a couple of times around the 30 level, big psychological level. Tested it once, a second time, went in there a third time. I have entered on that bullish engulfing candle and I'm looking at this area as my first target. Didn't quite get there, unfortunately, um, this week. And we are starting to look a little bit bearish now. So judging how price does perform early next week, I may close the trade early and then look for a re-entry if momentum kicks back bullish again, because this is a bit more of a counter trend trade. We've had a lot of momentum to the downside. Uh, it is pro trend higher time frames. If I do zoom out and go to the weekly chart, you can see overall the trend is still to the upside, which is why I kind of still do ha uh, still have that bullish bias. But at the same time, we've had a, a pretty bearish few days in the market and gold's been falling out of the sky as well. So I'm always keeping an eye on gold if I'm going to be trading silver as well. So I'll keep an eye on momentum. Initial reaction was good, but yeah, momentum needs to persist. If not, I may pull the trade early, but this is my first um, target to remove risk and then see if we can trail stocks back to 32 and I may just call it a day up there. But that's the trade for the week for myself. Nothing else quite presented itself uh, last week. Uh, in terms of the dollar, of course, very, very bullish, hence why we had a lot of USD pairs falling out of the sky. Uh, with USD, we are hitting some big areas on the higher time frames where I do think we can have at least a bit of retracement. Now, the bigger move may still potentially be a break of this area, 107. Price may break through that and keep, and keep flying. Um, but at least do expect to see some profit taking coming in, at least a bit of a downside, and then maybe we go and break through. And at the same time, we could actually see a really big reversal here for the dollar as well. If you look at the technicals, all price has been doing is ranging between the high and the low here pretty much for the past two years, really. So if we do reject this level, it could be a really big sell off. Uh, dropping to the low time frames, there could be some short term uh, long opportunities or not really short term, more medium term long opportunities on USD if we were to have that retracement. I do like the high over here, really strong break of that. If the market was to come back correctively, retest this area, I do think that's a nice place for a buy. Of course, a nice place for a sell on Euro USD, which we'll take a look in a second, but that's kind of the setup I'm looking at this week for USD. A bit of weakness, hitting a big level. Do expect a bit of a pullback. Market's still pretty stretched. And if you are still gonna go higher, I think this is a nice place to see it, at least back to the high, and then we'll go from there. You know, we'll wait for the breakout to come into place if we are actually going to break through that weekly level and continue to push on. In terms of Euro USD, I'm looking for the exact opposite and we're pretty much doing the exact same thing as the dollar, which is coming to a really massive level. Again, a range we've been in for more or less the past two years. We're back at the low. We could now see a bounce. The market is still pretty stretched. So if we are going to continue to sell off, you know, I do have a nice area which I'll look to short from which is the retest of this low, which again is pretty much the inverse setup of what we just looked at USD. And again, they are inversely correlated, uh, but it's nice to see they look pretty much the exact same really. Uh, and that looks like a nice setup there to take advantage of some shorts. If we come there, see some healthy rejection, stops above the zone and possibly a swing back into the low there. Remember, we do have that big weekly level in this area. So you probably don't wanna try and push the trade too far because there's a chance we could really find support and you know, all your floating profits will disappear. In terms of a nice pace to look for your short entries, you know, keeping up with this bearish structure, I can move this out of the way, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, really nice breakout. There's a good chance we could see a reaction there. I just don't expect it to go too far because of the level we're trading into. But uh, keep an eye on 1.07 for shorts and Euro USD. If we can get pulled back this week, that'd be great. And possibly a push back into the low for next week. Okay, so next up we got USD JPY. So it's an interesting end to the week for the end pairs. Price was looking really bearish. 
Uh, you can see there in the weekly candle, it was an all right close. It was kind of 50% bullish, 50% wick, so not convincing. Uh, push to the upside but my main focus on the high time frames is this weekly level here on dollar yen really big rejection big move to the downside another big rejection big move to the downside and it looks like price is trying to break through it's not a convincing break when i'm looking for the break of my levels i want to see strong candle kind of closures closing above them and price really pushing away and at one point we did have that this week you know, if we did close up here that would be a very convincing break and then i'll be expecting dolly inch to continue back to the high but we did pull back and then see what happens with the other yen pairs with the big kind of drop we had just before the weekly candle kind of close it has made me less confident that dolly yen is just going to keep pushing i do however still like the bullish setups at least following the market structure uh, on the four hour time frame you can see we are still pretty consistent with the higher highs and higher lows we're of course still trading above the key level on the weekly chart and now we've come back into a nice area of confidence retesting that prior high along with this trend line as well we could see the third test and the push uh, to the upside um, another thing i don't like about this setup as well is that how aggressively you have fallen to the downside it was a nice bullish leg there but because this leg was so aggressive and so bearish it's not really the characteristic I want to see in terms of my pullbacks. I always like to take uh, situations where we got a really strong impulsive leg and then a slower corrective leg. Those are normally the, the much better quality setups and you do have a better win rate. This type of setup can play out, it's all probability at the end of the day, but not a setup that I'll be going for myself. And seeing what happens with the other yen pairs, I do think probably break through. So, if you're not looking for the longs, if you wait for the shorts, I'll be looking at something like this, the break of the channel, then looking for some lower highs and the shorts and looking for something like this later on. Probably take a while to develop, but that's really the, the setup I'll, I'll like to take, especially if this impulse momentum continues. If we continue to break through, keep keep seeing big candles breaking through, then yeah, I would like that short setup. We've got a really powerful level of support here, so I'd watch out for that as a target. Um, but the shorts do look good if we can break underneath 153.800, get a retest and take some shorts. So that's really the setup I'm eyeing up for next week for dollar yen. Okay, so over to dollar cad. So dollar cad looking very, very bullish. I do want to start with the weekly time frame actually because we just had a really convincing close past this level of resistance. So this could be the start of a really big breakout potentially with dollar cad. So now that we have cleared that level, looking for buys does look good now because we're not trading into a massive area of resistance. That's why I was so apprehensive of the buys before because of where we're trading. Now that's kind of to our backs. Now the longs look good and we do have a really nice four hour setup here. As you can see, first rejection, second, third, and then a really nice break to the upside. If price can have a bit of retracement and retest this level, I do think that's a nice place for a long. I do expect to see some dollar retracement on, on the DXY as well. So hopefully that can help dollar cad see some downside. And if we can get to that level around the 1.396 level, I do think that's a nice place for a long. Let's say we top out here and form a lower high in the uh, a higher high and the market comes back down i think that'll be a nice place to target for a trade idea as you can see there's just so much momentum in the market right now so if you do get a pullback to retest that level i do like the buys just need to wait for our confirmations but yeah dollar cad still looking really bullish breaking past a significant level so now if you can get a bit of retracement retest that level i do like the buys going to next week so keep an eye out for retest of 1.396 going into next week Okay, so over to Euro Pound. So Euro Pound, we are rejecting that monthly level so far. So if I scoot to the monthly time frame really quickly, you can see where we're trading. Really big level of support. Market still holding onto that level. So I am still looking for a bounce for for Euro Pound from this area because I'm always expecting you know, big significant levels like this to hold until it doesn't. And uh, at the moment, we did see a bullish engulfing candle last month. So that's an indication momentum is coming into the market. I know this monthly candle is still live, but a bit of a wick to the downside there potentially could see a lot more upside. So I am looking for buys in these areas. If you do drop back to the four hour chart, you can see price had a bit of a fake out this week. We were closing very bearish um, past this low. It just amounted to a big fake out because price came straight back above, retest that level of support. And now we are looking fairly bullish going to next week. So I still like the buys from that same area. Should the market come back down and retest that low? I do think that's a nice place for a buy. And if you were to see a convincing break above this, I do think this area is a nice place for a buy. Now, I'm not necessarily looking for a really big move for Euro Pound on the four hour chart. The idea is that, okay, we're in a big level of support. The idea is to look for buys, but not necessarily try to shoot, shoot for the moon and look for that 
you know, humongous reversal because Euro pound's a very choppy pair and the chances are you might catch a nice buy, but the market will probably top out somewhere like it's been doing and come back and wipe out your floating floating profit. So if you can get a buy from this low, I like it back to the high kind of where price has been ranging. If you can get a buy outside of this area, then I'll be looking at taking profits as we come back into resistance up here, a couple strong rejections just above 0.41. I think that's a healthy target as well. Just kind of looking to play what the market has been doing, but predominantly looking for buys in these areas. Really big level in the higher time frame, so not really interested in the sells. And if you do hold this, there's a good chance we could see a lot more upside in the near future. But in terms of levels to keep an eye out for, 0.83 looks really good and 0.83500 as well. Looking for confirmation at those levels and some buys. So that is the plan next week for EuroPound. Okay, so over to Aussie dollar. So Aussie dollar, I'm still bearish on this one, looking for a bit more downside before I do expect to see a bit of a bounce. Um, if I do zoom out, if in fact I go to the weekly chart, you can see all we've been doing with Aussie dollar is just ranging. You know, these are equal highs, equal lows, roughly there. Price has been back and forth, back and forth. Big rejection not long ago, and we've been falling pretty hard since then. So naturally, I expect us just to come back into the low of the range, which is around this 0.64 area. So the idea I have this week is looking to continue to trade to the short side and take advantage of that movement back into that low. And as we're not there yet, if the market is kind enough to retrace for us, that could be a nice opportunity, catch the next lower high and uh, and find some entries to ride it back down to 0.64. Then maybe one there we can discuss some buys to take it back up again. As you can see, the market's been falling pretty well, consistent lower high after lower high. I was looking for a bigger retracement. Unfortunately, we didn't see that and price has just been falling pretty hard since then. So now that we've broken through this floor here, it has left behind some solid resistance. If we can get there, retest it, see some nice rejection, lower high above that zone. Uh, I do think we can catch some nice shorts next week and, and ride that momentum to the downside. And like I said, we can discuss some buys later on. But that is the plan I have next week for Aussie dollar. Okay, so over to NZD CAD. So NZD CAD trading in a nice area where potentially we could see a nice bounce. If I go to the daily chart, you can see where we're trading. Really big ascending channel here. Higher highs and higher lows. I do think eventually we'll break through this low and break out the channel. And if that's the case, I do expect us to eventually come back into the low here. So I think the bigger move is likely to be to the short side of things. But at the moment, the market is doing a pretty good job at bouncing at this low. Nice area of demand, big push to the upside. And it's kind of uh, aligned quite nicely with the low end of this channel. So we could see a bounce here. In fact, if the market was to come back down for a nice double bottom, I think that could be a really nice trade. Bit on the aggressive side of things because you're going against the momentum. The market has been falling, but we're trading at a reasonable area. Would you expect you know price to turn uh, turn around from you know if we're going to hold this level? If we're not, and we're just going to break through, then we can discuss the shorts and looking to follow that momentum, and that could be an opportunity we discuss uh, more detail probably the week after if we do get the break. If not, for now the buys do look good. Strong rejection. On the daily chart, you see the bullish engulfing there, so the market is finding support. And if it's come back again, double bottom, I think that you'll find a nice entry. Um, I wouldn't probably shoot for the moon and try and take it all the way back to the high there, um, to the top end of the channel. It's a possibility, but there's a lot of obstacles in our way, a lot of uh, areas where we could find some resistance and see price turn against you. So coming into these areas, definitely the high up here, where they have that you know, double top there around 0.83. Uh, 500 I would say that's a really nice target to have in these areas you can look to book profits or trail stops if you want to so I do like this buy opportunity here but if you do break through we'll speak about the shorts on the retest of that same area and uh, I do expect us to see a long way uh, a big move and a long way down so we'll keep an eye out for that but at the moment we're still holding on to support so keep an eye out for that double bottom and um, yeah if you can get a push back to 0.83500 really nice move this week so keep an eye out for that for NZD CAD next week okay so over to pound NZD so I'm bullish on this one it's more of a longer term setup I am eyeing up I'm looking for the retest of that high hopefully we'll be taking a support along with that trend line there as well you can see the higher lows the market has been printing one two three four now looking for the fifth in that area for again a bounce to the upside we didn't quite come back into the high there potentially we could see price come into that level and then see the continuation i don't think i'll be holding on to the trade for too long um, or that long um, but i do like this area of confluence and if i do see the rejection I'm looking at um 
uh, I'm looking for on the four hour chart, I will be looking for entries in that area. I did say last week there could be some short term sales or short medium term sales uh, to get us into that level. I'm not really eyeing up the shorts. I was speaking about this area, it didn't quite happen. Looks like the market forms some resistance and, and is uh, rejecting that area pretty well. I'm not too sure about the breaking me test. I don't think this is the best conditions to be looking for breaking me test opportunities unless we see a really strong break. So if you are looking for shorts, you probably want to see price come back, retest resistance again. You've got a nice place to put a lower high, um, a, a low high into, put a stop loss above, and you've got a lot of downside to to capitalize on. You know, possibly push back into that low, but possibly a lot further as well, where I'm looking to buy from. But this is still the setup I'm eyeing up around 2.15, 2.125, and uh, hopefully we can still get back to the highs. But pound ends the, I do expect us to keep falling, I'm looking at that uh, as retracement. There could be some shorts in the meantime, not really a trade I'm eyeing up, where my confluence is um, you know, for the buy. So hopefully we can see that pullback happen at some point next week, because I've been waiting for a while. And uh, then we can speak about the longer term move to the upside, potentially all the way back to the swing high at 2.19. But that's still the setup I'm eyeing up going to next week for pound NZD. Okay, so over to CAD Yen. So CAD Yen really bearish at the end of the week. And on the weekly chart, things are looking very interesting because I've been discussing this weekly level here at 110,500 more or less. Uh, in a lot of detail, we've seen a lot of rejection at this area, initially over there, second time over there. And now we're seeing it a third time. You can see a lot of wicks to the upside, especially this week's candle and last week's candle. Big wick to the upside, price pull back down, another big wick to the upside and price closed bearish. So to me, it looks like price is really struggling at this level. And if we were to keep doing that, I do expect to see a big move to the downside. And possibly what I was speaking about next, uh, about last week, about the continuation of this bearish trend could be looking to come into fruition. You know, big strong move to the downside. This looks like it might be the correction of that. And if that's the case, there's a lot of downside for us to move into. So it could be a very, very bearish few weeks for the yen pairs and CAD yen in particular, if we do sustain that level as resistance and so we don't go and break through it next week. So what I'm looking at on the four hour chart is a lot more downside, really nice momentum as we close for the week. Now I'm looking for price to keep that up, break through the level, of course break structure, and then I'll be looking for the retest as resistance for that next lower high and then some shorts. This bullish trend has been nice. We have seen some nice bullish legs, but it's very corrective and it's on its last legs, especially with that strong bearish, um, bearish move we had at the end of the week there. So if that sustains break structure, I will be looking for the retest as resistance for that lower high and we could be seeing a lot of downside. I think in terms of the targets, I'll keep it simple back into this area. We tested it a few, a few times as supports so around 107, 800 looks really good. Like I said, on the higher time frames, we could go a lot further, but in terms of a smart, you know, healthy target for, for next week, I do like this 107, 800 area, but it looks to me that price is breaking structure. So if you can keep the momentum going, that'd be great. Look for the retest of support and uh, retest of resistance, sorry. Look for a lower high, stops above the, uh, above the zone and looking for at least a push into 107.8. So that'll be the plan going to next week for CAD yen. Okay, so over to pound USD. So pound USD, things are looking pretty bearish. Of course, USD has been pretty strong. Pound was pretty weak at some point this week as well. And that's been a recipe for bearishness, um, as we can all see. But for pound USD, I'm looking for a bounce as uh, the market's still pretty stretched. We haven't really seen much upside since we've been falling since that high over there. So I do expect to see a bit of a bounce, some profit taken from the sellers, buyers looking to get involved at these you know, big swing lows in the daily chart big reactions here. So I do expect to see a bit of retracement. And if USD does re reject that 107, 200 level as well, we probably will see some downside for USD and of course, some upside there for pound USD, hopefully too. And if that's the case, retracements back to this level look really, really good. Whether we get there or not, it's a difficult question because it is pretty far away. So if we do retrace there, we might not even see it next week potentially, but this looks like a really nice level. Should we get there? 1.284 looks really, really good. Looking for confirmations at that area and then hopefully we can just ride that momentum back into the low if we were to pull back from here let's say and that would be a really nice target back into where we came from so pound usd is still pretty bearish still pretty consistent with all the lower highs still a lot of momentum in the market to the downside but i do expect to see a bit of a bounce since the market's so stretched we'll likely to see some retracement pretty soon 
And if you do get some healthy retracement, I like this level here, strong support, really nice breakout, a lot of momentum on the breakout. So that tells me this is a nice level to short from and expect some continuation. So keep an eye on 1.285286 for some shorts next week for pound at USD. Okay, so now onto pound CAD. So pound CAD has had a really nice break to the downside this week and I am definitely bearish on this market now. We've had this level of support, which we have seen a numerous tests of prices now finally broken through that level that level's finally given way so now i'm expecting more downside and a continuation of that momentum the setup i'm looking for is the retest of this low really strong support looking for that to be turn resistance looking for entries at that area stop loss above the level and not looking for much to be honest if you can get pushed back into support here as you can see really sturdy support as of late prices reject this area a few times so if we can get some shorts back into that level i think that's a really nice tidy trade We're looking at a nice one to two one to three one to four and depending on your entry so the ritual looks healthy and uh, potentially we could go a lot further as well because i do want to point out on the daily chart we have finally broken out of that um, ascending trend line connecting the higher lows Price has finally made a strong break of that. So that could be the start of potentially a really big bearish trend in the near future. So do keep an eye on that. But for now, looking for the retest of that zone. Um, if I drop back to the four hour chart, for now, just looking for the retest of that zone at 1.7900, uh, 1.79, um, it's actually 9,000, uh, 1.79 is where I'm looking for the shorts and uh, hopefully you can buy some entries in that area next week. So I really do like the setup, hopefully nice pullback and looking for some continuations next week. Okay, so over two pound yen. So pound yen, I like this setup to the downside. Prices, of course, end of the week pretty bearish as we spoke about. All the yen pairs were pretty bearish from Friday and uh, we've seen a really strong break outside of this ascending channel now. Pound yen has been really, really corrective on this way up. We came into this area of supply. We stopped here for a few days, a few weeks to the upside and a really strong move to the downside. And now prices test that area on a few occasions, failed to break through. And now this really corrective ascending channel has met its match. Now we're looking really bare. So I do expect to see more downside going into next week. In terms of opportunities, I do like the retest of this low here. I would keep an eye for the retest of this low, but the breakout's not big enough. I need price to push a lot further and keep that momentum up going before I look for a retest of this low. But this area looks great. Really nice tightly knit consolidation, strong break to the downside, really big candles. So if we do start next week bullish and see some upside into that area, I will be looking for shorts for continuations, looking for entry confirmation, of course, stops above the high and at least the push back into the low. I have marked out this area on the daily chart, which I think we should keep an eye out for which is the retest of this swing high. We'll be taking a support around one point, uh, not one point, sorry, around 193.153. So I think that's a nice healthy target for the week. Potentially, if the yen pairs are really gonna sell off, we could go a lot further as well. But I think that's an area to keep an eye out for just in case we do have a bounce. But for now, I like the setup. We had the equal highs over here. Now the market is now forming some lower highs. So looking for the next one for some more downside next week. Okay, so over to gold. So gold very bearish this week. We broke through structure very aggressively. So I'm expecting more downside for gold. I do think, of course, longer term gold, gold's trajectory is still to the upside. But I wouldn't be too surprised if it's come back, retest some consolidation around 24, uh, 2400, 2350. I wouldn't be surprised if we were to hit some of these prices before potentially continuing. But as you can see on the weekly chart, really strong candles to the downside, really aggressive momentum. So it does look like gold is definitely shifting from bullish to bearish in terms of the recent momentum. And looking at the four hour chart, really aggressive legs to the downside, consistent lower highs as well. So now I'm looking for the continuation of that. A couple of areas where I'm looking to short from, at least intraday anyway, I do like this opportunity here at around 25.91. If you were to have a slightly bigger pullback for gold, then I will keep an eye on this area around 26.50. In fact, that would be my preferred area to short from. I do think we could probably see a nice reaction here, but in terms of you know looking to hold gold a little bit longer and really take advantage of a swing, possibly back to that you know, 2400, 2350 area, I would like to see a deeper pullback for that. 
The only question is, will we get that deeper pullback? Gold might be a little bit too bearish um, next week. We might not retrace too much. But again, as traders, we've got to react to what the market is giving us. So I'll keep an eye on both areas, 25.90 and 26.50. In terms of shorting gold, stops above the high and again, at least target back into that prior low. But uh, yeah, very bearish for gold, solid break of structure, a lot of momentum in the market, looking for basically the, the pullback of this bearish move for the continuation. So looking for that next lower high, those two are my areas of interest and I will be looking to see if we can get it back down into that low. But that is the plan going to next week for gold. Okay, so over to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, just doing Bitcoin things at the moment, still looking very, very bullish. As we can see, if I scoot to the weekly time frame, really solid candle this week. I know we still got one day and nine hours left, but at the moment, still looking pretty strong. And of course, last week's candle, really strong as well, indicating a lot of momentum to the upside. Now, I do expect Bitcoin just to go and hit 100K. Um, you know, it's pretty much here. I do expect price to get it. It's so close. Momentum still looks strong. I do think we'll see price get there. And I think psychologically as well, maybe a lot of people are looking to hold on to their, uh, hold on to their Bitcoin until we get to 100K and then maybe look to secure some profits there. So I think that could be where a lot of people are looking to cash in on some of their gains. So I do think there's more upside to be had for Bitcoin. Looking at the four hour chart as well, really strong move to the upside. Starting to create some port here in terms of some intra week, intra day opportunities. If the market was to push back into this low. I do think that's a nice place to buy. And to be honest, it's the only kind of realistic place I would buy. I do like the retest of the high here, but that's just too big of a pullback. The key thing with Bitcoin is all about momentum. Uh, if we were to have a really big push like that to the downside, that would be a little bit alarming with Bitcoin. You might still see a bounce from that area, but in terms of a trend continuation, it might kind of do something like that. So I, I don't want to see a pullback that big. It's a bit unreasonable, especially with a market like uh, Bitcoin, which depends so much on momentum to keep that trend going. So um, yeah, Bitcoin, I like the buys around 86, 800 stops below, at least get con uh, continuation back to the high and maybe you're feeling a little bit lucky, you can try and push it to 100K as well. But I do still expect higher prices, 100K is such a big level, I do expect us to get there. And then maybe around there, we might go through some bigger retracement. But for now, still expecting more upside next week for Bitcoin. Okay, so last but not least, we've got a bonus pair, which for this week is Euro Yen. So this pair looks like we could be in for a really big move to the downside. It's a similar situation as with CAD Yen and a lot of the Yen pairs, really. You can see we've been trading at a major level of resistance on the weekly chart. In fact, if I just mark that as a zone, you can see prior resistance price broke through, we broke back underneath. Now it looks like price is holding as resistance, especially with this weekly candle. Nice wick to the upside, closing bearish and a nice shooting star formation. So I'm expecting price to hold onto this level now. And if we do that, there's a lot of downside, a lot of room for us to move into. I'm looking for us to come back into this low here around 155. And to me, that looks like a big head and shoulder pattern with your left, your head, and possibly your right shoulder forming. So this could be the start of a really big move to the downside for CAD Yen. So if I do drop to the four hour chart, and map out some opportunities what i do want to see is this momentum sustain a little bit further and then i will be looking for the retest of that same level at 163 400 for some shorts i do want to also see the break of structure here and this was kind of our swing low which gave us a strong move to the upside if we can pinch that that'll be great and i will be looking for shorts on the retest of this low for the next lower high at that same area and of course continuations and I will, we'll be looking to try and stretch this trade because if the higher time frames are going to form that head uh, left head right shoulder uh, then there is a lot of room for us to move into so I want to try and maximize that opportunity and I do like this slow down here at 158.780 as a nice target of course we could hit that target there as well and look at the risk reward on that it looks very very promising but of course if you can get pushed into this area depending on your stop loss size you're still looking looking at a very attractive trade as well uh, and i will be trading stops as well to, to manage that trade but overall yuri and looking really really good really nice structure i like the momentum this week hopefully that can continue a little bit further look at the retest of the zone and then looking at a lot more downside but yeah pretty bearish on yuri yen going into next week and that guys does bring us to the end of the analysis for the week if you have found it useful please be sure to smash the like button drop a comment down below any pairs you're looking to trade next week 
And of course, make sure you do hit the bell so you don't miss out on any streams or uploads in the future. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you do check out the Elevating Trades Discord channel. Link to that in the description below. Make sure you're there so you don't miss out on anything. But guys, have a great day. Have a great weekend. And I'll catch you all in the new week.